heard and today's final presentation is going to be delivered by Dr. Urjun Mukherjee. Dr. Urjun Mukherjee graduated as an architect from the erstwhile Bengal Engineering College, Shipur, now IIEST Shipur, and as a city planner from IIT Kharagpur, he practiced in the industry in both roles for five years and also works extensively as a graphic designer. He has provided consultancy as a heritage expert with projects at Delhi and Kanchipuram for the National Monuments Authority and the ongoing Kujbihar Heritage Town project for the government of West Bengal. Dr. Mukherjee pursued his doctoral research on the postmodern in contemporary Indian architecture from IIT Kharagpur. He has been teaching since the last six years, first at NIT Raurkela and presently at IIT Kharagpur. He has several international publications and has co-edited a volume on integrated urban conservation. He is registered with the COA and is a member of ITPI and ICOMOS India. We will now request Dr. Mukherjee to kindly deliver his lecture and presentation on integration heritage conservation with urban planning experiences for Kujbihar. Please, Mr. Mukherjee. Thank you, Rishi Kalpo, for your kind introduction. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. Thank you. Namaskar and a very good evening to everyone. I will present my screen. Let's see if that works. Today, I shall be talking about my experiences of integrating heritage conservation with urban planning based on my work at Kuch Bihar. Now, as we all know, Kuch Bihar is a rather small historic town, only about eight square kilometers. A majority of people who know about it nationally know it for the Royal Palace, which is an ASI protected monument of national importance. And, of course, also because of the popularity of late Rajmata Gayatri Devi of Jaipur, who was a princess of Kuch Bihar. Regionally, it is also well known because of the Madan Mohan Temple and the Rash Mala celebration. But there is more to Kuch Bihar's heritage. And the government of West Bengal consulted IIT Kharagpur in order to declare it as a heritage town. For us, there were several important questions in this regard. How to assess the value of the heritage resources and how to articulate the cultural significance of the town? How to ensure conservation through a formal statutory framework? And how to integrate and balance conservation of the heritage with the development goals of the town. And finally, how to kickstart formal conservation efforts through implementable proposals. I shall try to address each of these questions in today's presentation. First, I would like to talk about the heritage assessment. For statutory listing and grading, individual heritage elements were identified to archival research, ground surveys, and consultation with experts. Now, this was a rather lengthy exercise. And as a result of this, detailed inventories were prepared for each element or property based on pro formas, which were recommended by INTAC and the Council of Europe. The assessment of these properties looked at values, authenticity, and integrity, which in turn indicated the significance and the grade of the heritage. Now for the values, four domains were considered. Initially, we of course had a domain called architectural value, but we soon realized the fallacy of that and adapted the domains from the Barra Charter of ICOMOS Australia. So the domains were historic, sociocultural, aesthetic, and scientific value. Now, contextual, 
four point criteria scales were designed for each of the domains and three point criteria scales for authenticity and integrity. Here, I show you an example of the scale for historic value, articulated specifically in terms of the local history and significance of Kuch Bihar. And here is the scale for integrity, considering the intactness and relationships of the parts, the setting, and the uses. Now, significance is a function of value, authenticity, and integrity. Given the nature of the parameters, it is of course not an additive function, but a product. Assigning objective values to the various criteria scales, we have an objective measure of significance in any particular domain. Now these domain significances from the four domains are not added up. Instead, performance in one or more of the domains is considered and they're grouped under four grades having different implications. Uh, right now, I'm not free to share the exact implications at the moment because they're at the proposal stage, but it is in relation to the amount of preservation required the interventions allowed, and the permissions which would be necessary. Based on this, 155 heritage properties have already been statutorily listed by the Heritage Commission, the West Bengal Heritage Commission, on July 5th, 2019. But the significance of Kuch Bihar as a heritage town is not just in terms of a collection of heritage properties and sites. Hence, the geopolitical and social history of both the region and the town was studied in detail, as also the evolution of the present town form, which was systematically planned and developed under the patronage of the Koch dynasty and all the extant evidences of that. Based on this understanding, the heritage significance of the town as a whole was articulated under four criteria. Number one, the typology of the built heritage. The town is testimony to several phases of architectural stylistic practices. Number two, it is a testimony to a cultural tradition, the confluence of indigenous and non-indigenous as well as Indian and European cultures. And we have had a flavor of that in the wonderful reminiscences we uh, had today earlier. Number three, association with ideas and traditions, specifically the Bengal Renaissance and the Brahmo culture. And lastly, number four, land use as a representation of a culture or human interaction with nature, with its historical planned urban pattern, and the waterscape of tanks in response to the geotopography of the town, it was akin to a cultural landscape. An understanding of the historic development, the heritage significance, and the extent resources led to the delineation of heritage zones in the town. This shows the division of the entire town into three zones. The large chunk on the left is the earlier historic core. The smaller chunk on the right is where the town grew during the later colonial era. And both of these have a large concentration of heritage properties or sites. The rest of the town is zone three, with scattered presence of heritage elements. Of course, there are further subdivisions which are employed for development control, but I'll not go into that right now. Now, declaration of heritage town, or, or you know, even heritage precincts, is not possible until the amendment of existing legal instruments to bring in provisions for such action. 
and we shall discuss that subsequently. The next concern is how to integrate the conservation of the town's heritage with its development goals to a formal statutory mechanism. Today, I would articulate the concerns through four broad issues. What would be the statutory instruments or framework for this? What would be the legal reforms and how to address the existing gaps? How to protect property rights of the owners? And how to capitalize on heritage for improved urban development? First, I shall be talking about the legal framework and reforms. And I should mention that IIES Shippur was a party to these exercises. We, of course, have the Amasar Act for heritage conservation at the national level, but that is relevant only for the Royal Palace. At the state level, we have the Westfall Heritage Commission Act, which is more specific for our objective, and we have the Town and Country Planning Act, which provides statutory mechanisms for planning urban development. But also, in line with the 74th Amendment of the Indian Constitution, 1993, which mandates devolution of powers to urban local bodies, we have the Municipal Act of 1993 and the Associated Rule. Of course, we have several other national and state acts, regulations, guidelines, and schemes for reference. Through the West Bengal Municipal Amendment Bill, 2019, we were able to accommodate constitution of a heritage conservation committee at the local body level, who would initiate, inspect, and forward proposals to the State Heritage Commission. Now, this is significant, as from being a top-down approach, it is now a bottoms-up approach, investing the local representatives with agency. Also, it provides for the constitution of a heritage cell at the municipal office, which would look into the day-to-day -day groundwork for all the activities related to heritage conservation. And the Act now also defines and recognizes various types and scales of heritage, including zones, areas, and precincts not just individual property. Amendment of the municipal rules would provide for implementation of the provisions of the amended act, and this is underway. The amendments of the other acts are still under process and I'm not at liberty to share the details. However, I would like to share the objectives of the reforms. The Heritage Commission Act would be more explicit in recognizing various types and scales of heritage, but to render it with a broader scope, he would also want things like cultural landscape, intangible heritage, cultural roots, etc. Uh, because the domain of action of this act is not limited to municipal towns. Also, the criteria for assessment of heritage value and listing would be more rationalized and systematized, uh, as I already illustrated we have done for Kuch Bihar. And lastly, it would provide for the statutory declaration of a heritage town. Coming to the integration of conservation with instruments of urban development, the Town and Country Planning Act presently provides for indication of areas or buildings requiring preservation or conservation in the Land Use Development Control Plan, which is a statutory document. And the proposed reform is that this should also be more explicit in recognizing various types and scales of heritage. But more importantly, we strategically utilize the LUDCP with land use maps and registers, which is the LUMR, and the Development Control Regulations, or the DCR, as a statutory mechanism for conservation of heritage. 
Now, since the LUDCP is a comprehensive plan with analysis and proposals for all aspects of urban development, like uh, housing, economy, physical and social infrastructure, etc., uh, this provides the scope for inspecting the development needs and goals and guiding them in tandem with conservation needs and goals. Also, the proposed DCR provides for essential tools like transfer of development rights or TDR to protect the property rights of private owners of property facing development restrictions in view of the heritage conservation. To briefly explain the TDR, if any application for development is refused under the DCR because of heritage conservation concerns, or conditions of, are imposed on that property which deprive the owner or lessee of any unconsumed FAR, which is the floor area ratio, you know, the amount they can build, they shall be compensated by grant of a development rights certificate which would be in terms of tradable floor space, the floor space which they are not allowed to build, they can trade in it. Thus, development right becomes an economic good. The tradable floor space can be utilized at another property or bought by another owner as development right, which would be applicable over and above the prescribed standard FAR as specified in the proposed DCR. Now, since TFS generated in an urban area would be utilized within the same urban area only, this has a significant impact on the development pattern of the town. So, donor zones and receiving zones were demarcated after carefully considering the urban fabric and the projected development needs and goals. So here you see some of the analysis and we actually had students from Kuch Bihar Polytechnic helping us with the plot to plot survey of the entire town based on which the analysis of various parameters were generated. And finally, there were three sub zones which were identified as the receiving zone. Again, a tourism development plan was formulated to especially capitalize on heritage resources as a driver for our and develop. This included strategies for linking the town to the tourism circuit of the region. You see a reflection of that in the map and the top right corner. Uh, and recommended a variety of tourist itineraries to attract a diverse set of tourists, which one day plan, two day plan, where would they go and all of those things. As well as specific interventions such as heritage branding some of which you see at the bottom right, parts of which uh, uh, are under process right now. Uh, then heritage accommodation, arts and crafts, hearts, or bazaars, that is, a town museum, development of places for a vibrant nightlife, which we felt was missing uh, in the town at present and which would be essential to attract tourists food and performing arts festivals, children's competitions, which would increase awareness, heritage cricket trophy, and heritage walks and rides, uh, some of which you can see here. Now, I would like to very quickly address the last question of a few implementable proposals to kickstart the integrated physical conservation and development. One of this was a maintenance manual for the heritage structures, uh, which was prepared after an investigation of the state of preservation of the heritage resources in town. This involved a system of categorization into four classes, but I would not discuss that today. And we have had a very thorough discussion of the requirements and the various aspects of maintenance uh, in the previous lecture. More importantly, I would like to talk of the action area plans, which were employed to address the needs of heritage precincts 
like Shagur Dikhi and Boiragi Dikhi, even before it was possible to declare them as such through the Amended Heritage Commission Act. These had the potential to become model examples which would drive further urban conservation come development projects. The objective was to create exciting and inclusive public places that highlight and communicate the heritage significance while contributing to town life and generating revenues for sustainability. Of course, there was also the challenge of exemplifying the introduction of new design elements in a historic setting, which would be sensitive to the heritage fabric, but without a pretense of historicism that might corrupt the authenticity of the experience. So, a contemporary but contextual design vocabulary. The first is the Shagor Digi precinct at the heart of the old town. This has the largest tank and many heritage buildings which were and are public offices. This is the precinct delineation. The heritage structures are in darker yellow. Some basic interventions were proposed for the heritage properties, like removal of accretion, maintenance, signage, information, facade lighting. But the major intervention was at the street level through proper design of the public spaces. This is uh, a glimpse of the proposal. I'll just skip through some of the visuals to give you an understanding of uh, the kind of development we were envisioning. Uh, how we accommodate but uh, organize the present activities in a more ordered fashion and how it could really become a lively public space. Second one is the Boiragi Digi precinct. The Digi is right across the modern Mohan temple. This is the delineation. And south of the tank is the derelict Shadharan Brahmo Shamaj structure called Chongshritik Shango. Here, the interventions were more at the property level, where we combine the Digi and the Brahmo Shamaj property to a unified design. And the derelict structure becomes a heritage gallery and cafe to adaptive views. This shows glimpses of the proposed development of the site. You can see the Barbrambo Shamaj structure becomes the center, the focus of the public space being developed all around. And how uh, the historic vocabulary, but in a more abstract contemporary manner is employed accommodating various activities and facilities to make it a more lively, functional public space and generating revenue. At this point, I would like to acknowledge the project team who contributed to uh, the entire proposal that we are working for. Uh, the entirety of which is, of course, not possible for you, possible, possible for me to present and for you to go through uh, in this short presentation. And I end my presentation. Thank you. Dr. Arjun Mukherjee for his excellent presentation. The Kujbir Archive has been fortunate. Kujbir Archive has been fortunate to receive his guidance, especially regarding the heritage movement in Kujbihar, for which we are highly gratified. I will invite our participants, if they have any questions, then present our speaker with the questions. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Arjun. Uh, this is uh, Nandukumar Savant from Goa. 
Uh, I'm a basically a geographer and uh, very recently working on heritage of some of the parts of uh, Goa. Uh, a very basic question like a researcher, how is that you were able to do uh, the zonification of the um, places uh, uh, in terms of uh, which software did you use and how did you find out uh, areas and did you use certain methodology which I was more interested from a recent perspective point? So this is my first question. Thank you, Nand Kumar, for the question. Yeah. Uh, the foundation for the either you know delineation of the heritage zones is of course a very thorough survey at ground, uh, which we conducted over days. We actually visited each and every heritage property, had discussions with all the local experts, did a lot of archival research. In fact, Rishi Kolpo helped us access a lot of documents. Now, all this document, uh, real, I mean, information was then put up to a, I mean, on a GIS platform. And then, uh, based on an understanding on how the heritage is distributed on the town, as also what is the history of the town, uh, how it grew, what are the communities, how, how did the fabric actually evolve? So with that overall understanding as well, uh, the zones were identified based on what is their history, what is the concentration of existing heritage properties. And of course, we had several uh, issues as to the moment you're delineating zones, you're actually drawing a line. And it has implications in terms of development control because a line means one property comes into a particular heritage zone with particular restrictions, whereas maybe the next property is not. So it has to have a very strong rationale. Otherwise, it will be challenged because it has actual implications on property rights. So uh, it would be difficult for me to explain all the uh, you know, methodologies we adopted for our rationale. But if you get in touch with me, I could explain. But yes, you're right. There was a very uh, structured methodology which was followed uh, because if you don't do that, uh, then everything falls flat. Because if your foundation of zoning is questioned, then you cannot go forth with uh, controlling the development or ensuring conservation. Did I answer your question? Uh, absolutely. Because uh, being a geographer and I too using GIS, I can understand. Uh, when you draw polygons of zone. So the just to take on, did you also work something on a concentrant index on this aspect to make the phases and the zones? Okay, yeah. One of the initial ideas was that, but uh, we gave, gave up that exercise because end of the day, we have to understand that the properties and sites that we have in town is only the existing physical uh, representation of what is heritage. Heritage itself is not the building. Uh, if you look at the Bara Charter also, it talks of significance, cultural significance in terms of the values. The values are always intangible. The physical ex extent representations of the values are only you know things that we still have they do not constitute the entirety of what value is so we actually have to go back to the history of the town the development of the town what the town really means uh, so it is not just a very detached objective analysis of concentration but what really is the intangible value that we are trying to preserve? Which is why, you know, the two uh, major cores actually uh, follow more or less the footprints of the historic town as it developed. Uh, did I answer your question? Absolutely, absolutely. I could have gone with a lot of questions, but I know I, there's a constraint of time. 
uh, but i would be very glad uh, to connect with you maybe through a email or maybe a telephone call if with your permission sure i am sure you should also can share that with you thank you so much for your question yeah, thank you thank you thank you for it. we are now in our interactive session we would like to invite questions from our audiences any any questions please Yes, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Yes, okay. Um as you realize I haven't been to Kuchipa since 1968, so it's going to have changed a lot, but it's really nice to see someone from the area putting so much passion into redeveloping it, um uh, which must be very tough. I completely understand heritage is a tough uh, core anywhere. Um do you find it's harder to impress again on the authorities for kuchbahar then it might be for jaipur or udaipur which of course are a little higher up the scale thank you i i try to answer that uh interestingly it wasn't because uh, the project itself was initiated by the state government so it had the backing of the state authorities right at the beginning uh and uh, we right at the initiation of our interaction with them uh we had a very clear understanding that heritage need not be only world heritage of course world heritage probably has a more uh global attraction and relevance but local regional heritage is equally significant for local and regional communities and and that that is the shift which is happening uh, in the global heritage movement everywhere uh it is challenging not so much in terms of impressing the significance on the local people because through our interactions we actually found that people in kuch bihar are very aware and very proud of their heritage uh it is uh, the challenge is more in terms of how to find authentic information because documentation is very poor uh and then how to mobilize uh both funds and guide sensitive action because uh, the people are very uh, eager to preserve their heritage but as mr bhattacharya noted a lot of the action uh is uh, well intended but, but misdirected uh that is because it is not being taken up by more trained professionals from heritage organizations uh so that is probably where uh, another challenge lies i'm sorry to answer your question yeah uh hang on yes that's fine for me no anyway i look forward to the revised and renewed uh, city and maybe we'll come and visit that would be lovely thank you okay well thank you very much again for your talk it was very enlightening Dr Mukherjee has discussed thoroughly the problems and the problems and the opportunities we have of developing Kuch Bihar as a heritage city we are very thankful to him are there any questions please good evening sir i am reema malik uh, i would like to ask a question uh, am i audible yes you are uh i'm doing research in calcutta university uh, i would like to know how you have delineated the heritage present precisely uh what are the actual methodology that you have used uh, used for delineation of the present heritage present term thank you 
Right. So uh, thank you for your question, Rima. So let us first look at what we mean by a heritage precinct, uh, where we are not just talking of individual properties and their significance, but we are talking of a group of properties and public places in and around the properties, which together constitute some kind of a significance which is more than the significance of the individual parts. And if you look at places like Shagor Dighi and Boiragi Dighi, it becomes very obvious that it's not just the Dighi per se, but how life uh, arranged around the Dighi as the focus. And so many different kinds of activities are coming together. And the, the cultural significance of, is of that entire ensemble. So obviously, the understanding of the precinct is based on what are these important elements which contribute to a, a broader level significance together. Uh, that is the, uh, the principle behind the delineation. But if you are interested about the exact delineation of which plots to include and which not, because again, that has an implication of uh, you know, development control regulations, yes, sir. Uh, which I was trying not to answer uh, you know, uh, in response to the previous question we had about this. It looks at uh, urban design, townscape values, because you know, when you have a road, and many times we have it's very easy to draw the line along the road because you have properties on either side without realizing that that means there are two different kinds of developments on either side of the road. And that creates an imbalance. Uh, development imbalance, perceptive, experiential imbalances. So the idea was to take at least one plot depth across the roads that we have, which more or less delineate the area that we want. Uh, and if you, if you had uh, been able to observe the delineation I was showing, so we were looking at which are the existing heritage buildings, which are the new buildings, which would also need to come under the precinct. They are not heritage properties per se, but to preserve the character and the significance of the precinct, we would also need to have control on those buildings. So that is the way we went ahead. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. But still, I have lots of queries. Uh, like, till how much uh, shall I deal in? I move forward. Uh, if I consider one heritage building, which have some heritage value according to the KMC, so till which next building I will continue to consider as my heritage precinct zone. So right. that, that is the where I am having my confusion. Yes, but it is a very drastified concern and it has to be resolved with an understanding of the context. You cannot have a you know, set rule for that. What really contributes to the significance of the precinct is a very contextual understanding. In certain cases, it might be several plot depths along the core. If there's a core, in certain cases, it could be one plot depth. So it has to be a contextual understanding of what is the value that you're trying to conserve and which is uh, in which are the properties which are contributing to it, contributing to the value and which are the properties which you need to uh, you know, guide and restrict the development so that the uh, value and the significance is not negatively impacted. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We are in our interactive session. Any questions from our viewers or participants, please? Mm, if you don't mind, can I ask one more question, please? Sure. 
yeah uh, the initial part of your presentation you talked about integration authenticity i think there were the four components of value system and uh, would you just uh, repeat and give a little more clearer picture to understand the concept right right I, i'll just put it in brief there are three components which are essential to consider when you're trying to assess cultural significance and you'll find uh, there are tips on this from the world heritage convention 1972 the icomos convention what it does is one aspect is the value the heritage value which we have articulated in terms of the four different domains of value it could be historic value uh, aesthetic value socio cultural value scientific value and you uh, if you go through the vara charter of australia icomos that will give you a very clear idea of what constitutes these different kinds of value so that is the intrinsic value which you are trying to conserve so however uh, the value is passed on as a legacy to you through whatever is existing in the present day now when you consider what is the state of these things the rep which represent the value you also have to uh, think of two other parameters one is the authenticity now many times we understand authenticity as a material authenticity suppose a, there's a building whether the building material is original or whether there's some accretion to it or not but that is not the uh, right way of looking at authenticity because you'll see there are actually world heritage sites like say if i take an example from india the elephanta caves uh, which were collapsing and they had to build in a site had to build in new columns to support the caves so they were new additions and they kind of looked like the old columns and uh, so you could say that that is not very authentic materially but that is not the understanding of authenticity the authenticity in context to uh, heritage cultural significance is how credible is the information that you have and ha and uh, you know the ideas about the value that it conveys to you how who are they how authentic are they uh, the second is integrity which actually talks of what is the state at which we find these uh, elements how intact or whole are they for example if you look at the konarak temple it lacks an in integrity because that uh, you know about the konarak temple the garbhagriha the largest structure behind completely collapsed uh, so that's one aspect of integrity there are other aspects as to how it relates to the setting its relationship with the surrounding with the activities is that preserved also you know what uh, mr vatitaria was talking of how is the original use preserved have new uses coming are they impacting the cultural significance of the building so integrity of use whether the new use is you cannot expect the old use to continue forever but is it at least sensitive is it compatible so these are the things that you consider now when we talk of cultural significance and i'm talking of these three parameters value authenticity and integrity you have to realize that what makes them uh you know heritage elements is the value without the value you know you might have a property which is in very good state and all the information you have and it's all authentic but it doesn't have any heritage value to it then you cannot say it has cultural significance so value is the core you cannot add authenticity and integrity as additional parameter authenticity and integrity modify the value that what is the present value so that is why i said they have to be a product function not an additive function uh i think i i'll stop about this here did i answer your question 
absolutely 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 thank you are there any further questions please i think we have reached the end of our session thanks to dr arjun mukherjee uh, thank you so much for inviting Th thank you very much we have reached the end of today's session we offer our cordial thanks to our most honorable special guests Mrs. Monisha Vidagraham, Mrs. Indira Venisa Isli, and Mrs. Anjali Diana Views, and our chief guest, Mrs. Aisha Sara Kohi. Hearty thanks to our most honorable speakers, Dr. Esther Smith, Mrs. Dapun Bhattacharya, and Dr. Arjun Mukherjee, and also a cordial thanks to all of our viewers. Thank you for being with us despite of this heart inconvenience today. We are hopeful that we will be able to resolve all the problems tomorrow and uh, provide our reputed viewers with seamless streaming. Tomorrow is the last day of our international webinar. Hope to see all of you tomorrow. We shall start 4 p.m. Stay safe. Take care. Namaskar.